Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today I'm here to release my preset library for Geometry Nodes uh, field workflow. Uh, the version number is probably 1.0.7 and this video is going to talk about how to use that in general. And this is this preset library is free. So you can use or you can just download it without using that. It does not really matter. But it's just free. Uh, if you would like to donate money, it's appreciated. Thank you very much. Uh, otherwise, let's start. So here we're in Blender, and this is the default factory setting of Blender. This also is how Blender looks like uh, when you install Blender on your computer the first time. So everything comes by default in Blender. In this case, if you check the Blender files, then you can see everything is just default, the default three objects default collection, default brushes for sculpting. Others is like a default thing. There is no node group because there is no node group. <laughs> so the first thing I would like to discuss is how to install my presets. Uh, frequently people are using appending methods. This is not wrong to do that. But there's, there is a better method. So I do not recommend you to use this append. Another thing I want to remind you is there is a add-on that comes with Blender, which is called a blend. Uh, it's called a node preset. Okay, so if you enable this add-on, then you have a directory. You just uh, choose any kind of path that leads to a file that contains all the node groups. You can use that, but uh, this method is also not good. So I'm going to disable this. I will discuss why this is not good later. So the best method I actually recommend you to do. Uh, it actually goes to file and uh, instead of appending, I'm going to use this link. Okay, so let's hit this link. And these are two files you probably download for Blender. So one is a demonstration file that contains all presets plus demonstration. The other is all contains all presets without the uh, demonstration. I technically speaking, there are no fundamental difference between them. If you are interested in demonstration, you can definitely take a look, but uh, it's another story. And here within this page, you can choose its relative path or absolute path. I think it will be better if it's an absolute path. Okay, so this is my opinion. And uh, before you actually link anything, I personally recommend you to change the name of the file. I will discuss the reason later, but uh, uh, for now, I'm not going to change the file and just go dive in to the file and we can see a lot of folder. Since this is a preset for node groups, then we definitely only care about the node tree. And within this node tree, we can see there are all these kind of group nodes, files, or whatever stuff. And you just hit the A so that you select all and then link. So immediately you can see there is a section called node group appearing in your current file, but there is no node group. Okay. Uh, another thing is there is a another file that has been linked and you can see the path here and uh, within that you have all these kind of node groups. So here let's go to geometry nodes and I'm going to select the cube and add a geometry node tree. Uh, within this node tree if I shift the A then you can see there are plenty of options that you have all this kind of thing. What I want to call your attention is these group nodes that you, you basically can call all these kind of presets. Okay, uh, another way is just to hit this search and then you can type directional fold. These are all the kind of node groups from the presets. So uh, notice previously that in Blender file, that's within current file, we do not have any node groups because we're not using the node groups in your current file, but rather using the group nodes from other files. So this is very amazing because if I change that, uh, because I do not need to change your current file to make any change with this preset, but rather I just change this uh, preset master file so that all these kind of changes will be updated to the file you're currently working with. This is why linkage is better than appending because maybe I found a bug and I would like to fix that. Then this kind of bug fix can be already uh, can be readily transferred to the file that you are currently working in as long as you keep the path the same. This is also why I recommend you to change the name of the file because if I update the version, for example, I name that as preset 2.0, it 
in order to keep the path consistent, you would like to make you want to like to rename the updated preset file to be preset one point zero point seven in this case, which is which does not make sense. So that's why I recommend you change some other things. I personally change the my preset file name as the preset master. So that's just the one of kind of opinion. Uh, another thing previously I've mentioned is that there is a node add-on which is called a node preset. Uh, this, pre uh, this node preset is uh, very useless because it's basically the same function as appending. The issue of appending is that all these kind of bug fix or upgrading will not be passed into your current file. There is no linkage. So even if I update the presets, you will not be benefited from that update in this case. Okay. Another thing is that uh, the basic uh, way of that temp uh, node preset add-on is working is using this template. And these templates uh, will not be shown within the search. So you cannot search, you have to go through this a very long list just like how we go through these group nodes. And you can feel it's a suffer because I have about 48 nodes available and you have to go through the list every time it's even working. The, the, ma the major reason I made all this kind of preset is to speed up your workflow. But if you have to go through this entire list without uh, being able to search them, then it's opposite to my expectation. That's why I recommend all this kind of link, which is probably the best. There are several issues with the linkage. Uh, for example, maybe one day I think, I do not want to name this, na uh, this preset as a directional fall. Then I change it to other names then you will lose the linkage. And by that moment, you probably would like to relocate, rename, or maybe delete and relink everything. That's another thing. So sometimes I feel kind of very contradicted uh, whether to change the name of a preset because sometimes it's a lot of painful. For example, I have a preset which is called attribute two instances. It was originally named as attributes on instances. So I'm I'm really struggling to think how should I actually name these presets? So this is also a kind of a side effect talking about this node link, but I think still the node link is the best option so that we have uh, to actually install a preset. So once you install these presets, so you link all these kind of presets, and I recommend you to save startup file so that this linkage is persistent within your file. And you do not necessarily to worry anything because uh, you because there is nothing in your actual current file. So it will not increase your file size. And uh, it's just uh, it's just that. Okay, so you do not need to worry anything. The size of your file will not be impacted by all this kind of linkage or kind of stuff. Uh, and if I added any new nodes in the future, then you have to link them again uh, with more options. And this is it. So here we're in a demonstration file of this preset release 1.0.7. And uh, before we actually talking about the preset in general, I would like to discuss uh, the ideology for me to make these presets. My ideology is to make the preset which is as generic as possible. And it should speed up for the workflow, which is the main reason for me to make these presets. For example, I have made a tutorial talking about the geometry proximity node. And to really use that, for example, to scale and up and down the instance based on the distance, what we actually need to do is to at least take a map range. So this is one thing. There are other things, for example, if you're using an empty as a controller, then what you need to do is to take an object info. And you also need to make sure you use an, a mesh line because the empty does not contain any information about the geometry. So you have to put the locations into starter locations, take a mesh into targets. You have to change the 
typed into points, you have to make the distance into the map range, and you probably have to reverse this relationship. And this is so called being done. But if you need to add more functions, then you have to keep adding more nodes, for example, color ramp or other things. There are lots of things you need to do. And consider the fact that you are a, if you are a motion graph designer and you have to repeat this entire process every time when you're working with this geometry proximity node, it's a lot of time and energy. That's why instead of using all this kind of five nodes or whatever stuff, I have a preset which is called proximity fault, which is directly doing these functions. Knowing that uh, this is not only for deformation of curves, uh, deformation of meshes, but also kind of scaling up down, scaling up and down for the instances or other things. There are many different usage as I've demonstrated in many other tutorials. After all, this is just a demonstration file and I try to keep them as simple as possible. The whole point here is that I try to make these kind of presets as generic as possible, which also means like uh, things like a tree, uh, tree generator or grass generator and ocean generator uh, will not be really included in these presets. And if I were to do this kind of tree generator kind of stuff, I will probably put them into another category and share the file more kind of individually instead. But uh, for the presets, I mostly consider them as generic as possible. So they're very likely be actually used in my work almost every time. So this is idea. For example, proximity fall of node is really being used very frequently, almost every time. Directional fall of is also very frequently being used. Okay, so this is idea. You need to get a kind of clear what will be included within this presets release, what will not be included. Okay. Uh, second important thing. Uh, is how to use this demonstration file. This demonstration file is not very practical because I try to make them as simple as possible. So I only make the most simple and stupid example. Uh, if you are not familiar with geometry nodes, I think you can still learn because this is really just a simple setup. Okay, and uh, very frequently I would recommend you just to try to look at your mesh, how it has been changed, and play around with empties. Because most of the time, empty has been used as a trigger to all this kind of different animation. Uh, also for dealing with the parameter things, you can play around by yourself. For example, take the fourth into this scale. And uh, by playing the sides, you can see the size has been changed with this fourth. By trim this curve, you can see how it has been changed as well. Minimum, maximum, it's just a magnitude. You can also turn on ECs or not. These are something that you can always play around. So I'm not going to dig into each of these presets because it probably takes a lot of time, but you can play around with these things. Uh, so let's see if there's other changes. For example, the delay animation, random transform, noise, polygon animation. Oh yes, shape keys may be interesting. So this is an example. You might not really understand what's going on here. But uh, that's why I recommend you sometimes when you see something that you do not understand, play in parameters to see if there is any changes. And we see, oh, if I just uh, play around with these location values, something has been changed. And since it's using our controller, which is basically the empty, the controller which is empty, then you can play around with this empty and you can, you can see a cube has been transformed into sphere. Oh, how magic is that? Maybe you would like to investigate the process. Why do I use a mix RGB node or why do I mix them? Maybe I can try to play around. Oh, yeah, I see something interesting. So th maybe this is a good opportunity to study or sometimes just play around if you're boring or other things other kinds of delay animation. You just play with the animation and see if there's any changes. And you can see, oh, interesting. Actually, it's not interesting, but there is something that you may study or you may learn from. And you can play around with things like variances. Yes, 
play with variances so that more things go out of order. Kind of things that you can always just uh, play around. And this is probably the idea. Actually, I found out a bug, but I will fix that later. Okay. So generally, I will ask you to play around these files if you're interested in it. And this is probably it. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.